Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got loads of stuff, including the new illegal specialised Athos, the uh, new no-pins indoor clothing, the new Seller Italia Novus Boost saddles, your upgrades, the Bike Vault, and our main talking point. Is tech first amateurs overtaking the pros? Let's find out. Let's do it. Let's start with the poll results from last week, where we asked you how old your bicycle helmet was. And it appears the GCN audience is very sensible. 50% of you said that your helmet was less than two years old. Although 9% of you did say your helmet was over six years old. Yeah, we also asked you the most like important question of all, which is what's the best thing to have come out of Dijon? Either Lapierre or Mustard. And well, 72% of you said mustard. Of course. There you go. Mm. Anyway, man, on we just have to hope that no one launches the global mustard network, otherwise I think we'll lose a lot of viewers. Yeah, we would, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Specialized have launched a new bike, the Athos. Now, this bike is pretty cool, right? It's, it's claimed by Specialized to be the purest road riding experience. A bike that is geared around full performance road riding, but not racing. Mm. Specialized have focused solely on performance and they have made it as light as possible. And just to be clear, this bike is completely illegal, meaning if you turned up to the Tour de France, you just wouldn't be able to ride it. Sorry, Pogaccia and Thomas, this bike is for us. Yeah, it is. And it's said to be 200 grams lighter, according to Specialized, than the Tarmac SL7 for the frame set. We, that's a lot, because the, the, yeah. the new Tarmac was already a light bike. It's a fully uh, disc brake bike as well, and the frame is said to weigh 588 grams, which is very light. But then the cool thing is that, when we put that into context, Specialized say that when built up with a full Jura Ace Di2 build, it comes in at six kilograms, and that's without super exotic fancy German carbon components, mm -hmm. which, I mean, that's seriously light for a disc brake bike. And it's pretty cool that you can now ride a bike that is better than the pros. Like, imagine rocking up to the cafe with that, and imagine Froome was at, at the cafe. He'd be checking that bike out, being pretty jealous, don't you think? Yeah, it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Mm. I think visually the bike intrigues me quite a bit because it doesn't have the dropped seat stays look of the, of the SL7 or the SL6, but it actually looks pretty sort of similar to the old SL5 that, you know, won so many sort yeah. of Grand Tours and stuff. More like an, a proper old school road bike with like a flat top tube. Um, but I've got some more stats for you on it. All right, go on, get the stats out. Stiffness to weight, according to Specialized, that's 162. Okay. What's Don't ask me what, okay. but it's 162. 162? Something. Um, it has a threaded bottom bracket as well. Interesting but um, it's not press fit because that would make it even lighter, but we understand the reasons why you might go for threaded, but we won't open that can of worms today. <laughs> um, has wide tire clearance, 32 millimeters. Nice. Which is cool. 27.2 uh, millimeter Alpinist seat post, which is proprietary. And then Alpinist CLX wheels from Specialized as well, which presumably are very light. Um, it has a redesigned through axle, which saves weight in the through axle, because through axles can be quite, yeah. quite heavy, yeah. so that's an interesting feature. And um, it has the same fit and geometry as the Tarmac SL7 nice. as well. Mm. Yeah. Now, the frame is ridiculously light, and the reason why it's so light is because Specialized have been able to use carbon more efficiently. And they say this has been achieved through, when you have pieces of carbon fiber like this, it's actually made of something called plies of carbon fiber. And these are lots and lots of layers of carbon that are then sandwiched together, a bit like a sort of wafer, to make a piece of carbon like this. And they've found a way, according to their engineers, to use longer, uh, bigger, more continuous plies, and therefore there's a total reduction in the number of uh, plies or layers of the wafer in this by 11%, uh, which helps with that mm. weight saving, apparently. There you go. But hold up, Ollie. This bike comes with a hefty price tag. Yeah, hit me. So four grand for just the frame. <laughs> Nearly 11 grand for the DI2 version. Wait. And for the Founders Edition, 13 What's grand. What's the Founders Edition? Special edition one. All oh, right. If you fancy that one. So yeah, you don't really want to 
if you do take this bike to the cafe, you, you want to lock it up. Maybe lock it to your ankle and you know, just don't leave it out of your sight. And this got us thinking, it's a question we've asked before, but, but is the UCI stifling bike design? You know, we're seeing bikes that are well below the UCI weight limit and, you know, presumably safe to Oops. ride. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, they would be lawsuits, wouldn't they? They wouldn't make them. Um, you know, because we can go safely well below 6.8 kilograms, does it make sense to still have that rule? Yeah. I feel like tech has advanced so much that bike brands are clearly, you know, very confident in making a bike that is illegal, but, you know, with the UCI weight limit and stuff, they still have to make the UCI legal bikes. But it makes you ask the question, should they, should bike brands just make one bike that is UCI legal and then the rest of their bikes just make really awesome bikes and chuck the UCI book out the window? Yeah, oh, well, or just make bikes that are UCI legal and then when the pros use them, they have to add weight to it to get it up to the- Yeah, could do. To the limit. Start I mean, sand and down, yeah, <laughs> yeah, down the tube. Yeah, fishing lead weights down the seat yeah. tube. Um, because it's not limited to just specialised either. You know, Canyon brought out their ultimate CFR just a few weeks ago, yeah. which again uses like more advanced carbon fibre tech and that with a full Campagnolo EPS build and disc brakes and clinches, you know, coming in at 6.29 kilos. So again, you know, yeah. really light. Yeah. Well, what about the tri-rig Omni that Sai tried out a few years <laughs> that ago? That thing. <laughs> that, yeah, that thing. It looks <laughs> completely insane, obviously built, you know, for yeah. aerodynamic and speed and Clearly never heard of a UCI rule book, has it? No, it hasn't, but I mean, would you, is it important to you, to you if you were getting a bike, would you want one that was UCI illegal or legal or? I mean, if I wasn't racing, not doing any UCI races, then what does it matter? Just get the best bike you can, but it would be a bit of a waste of money if you then decided to do some races where you needed a UCI legal bike. But if you've got enough money to buy that bike, you probably have enough money to buy a second bike, so. Yeah. Mm. I think the interesting thing is that when you think of it from a commercial perspective, there's way more people who don't need a UCI legal bike, aren't there? Yeah. There's a much bigger market for that than the kind of teams that do require it. And um, yeah, I mean, it makes me wonder, you know, what if they did get rid of that, that weight limit rule? Surely it's bound to happen at some point. Well, I it's mean- It's been there for so long. Well, is it? I mean- Should we write a letter to the UCI? Well, you could do. But I mean, if you did get rid of it, theoretically, you know, you're then in a situation where certain teams that are sponsored by certain bike brands are then going to be at a significant yeah. advantage. You know, if we got rid of the UCI weight limit tomorrow, all the specialised sponsored riders, they're going to ditch that new tarmac that they've been winning all the races on and they're going to go straight for this, yeah. this new one, aren't they? The Aethos. It'll be it. interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, but then also you'd have riders that are on b other bike brands that, you know, can't build bikes that light. So and they gonna... probably haven't because there's no point at the moment, is there, for some teams? Yeah. So, yeah, it does, it does get quite interesting. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it'd be a bit more like motorsport, wouldn't it, where the, the actual bike would actually then maybe make more of a difference if you've yeah. got a kilo difference between, between bikes. It's a big but... difference. Yeah. You, get, you know, it makes me think, though, because uh, over the last few years, all the major bike brands have been focusing their efforts on designing a bike that's, you know, aero, lightweight and has disc brakes and hits that 6.8 kilogram number. But uh, to most bike riders out there in the biggest market and myself included mm. in that, that means nothing to me. I don't care about 6.8 kilograms. You just want the kilograms. lightest bike, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I want the lightest bike possible. So yeah. and if it's got disc brakes, great. But, you know, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not bothered yeah. about that. So I think maybe, they've, maybe bike brands have been missing a trick. Yeah, well, we want to hear from you. Head over to the GCN app and vote on this poll. Do you think when bike brands are designing bikes, they should forget about the UCI rules? Yes or no? Head over to the GCN app and vote. Time now for Hot Tech. And we begin with the, well, new special edition kit that I'm sure many of you have seen the uh, EF Pro Cycling team wearing at the Giro d'Italia. <laughs> no, you can't. can't it's a collaboration it. between Palace Skateboards, Rafa, and Cannondale. It's pretty It's pretty out there. It's pretty it striking. Is. And it um, it's certainly been a very successful marketing exercise. Lots of people love it, but some of the people that don't like it appear to be the UCI, who found, uh, they found each one of the EF uh, riders, all eight of them, 500 Swiss Ooh. francs. Yeah, 
for registering the design too late. Damn. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Connor Dunn actually received a similar fine when he was at the, the Giro, uh, about 500 Swiss francs, although that was for wearing uh, socks and sandals while signing on. Didn't True register story. his socks and sandals. <laughs> <laughs> no publicity like bad publicity though. Their yeah. Super 6 Evo also got a new look and it appears that ducks have taken over the design. Yeah. And I think it's pretty cool. I do like it. Yeah. What about you? The TT helmets as well. Have you seen oh, those? The, those POC helmets. Fair play. They've gone to town with the ducks. They're quacking, aren't they? As in like cracking. Yeah. Yeah. Now with the World Championships taking place uh, this year as well, in between all the sort of grand tours. It's crazy, but it was only last week and yeah. we've had some special custom paint job bikes uh, awarded to the riders that won. I mean, my favourite is uh, Filippo Ganna's yes. uh, Pinarello Very Belide nice. TT bike, which if you've not seen it, incredible. It's like all gold um, and it's got sort of cool custom graphics on there. Um, it says Top Ganner, which is apparently is his nickname now. Yeah. Yeah, and it says that on top there's some Top Gun inspired sort of wing mm. graphics on there. And also for the uh, opening time trial, which was downhill at the Giro d'Italia, he had this outrageous 60 tooth chain ring on there. Pretty, nice. pretty tasty. Big, yeah. yeah. On the other hand, Alaphilippe had a nice new SL7 and he had a nice kind of faded rainbow design on it, quite understated, mm. um, with his nickname Aleph... Polak. Aleph Polak yeah. um, written on it too. Hopefully that didn't distract him from the finish line at Liège. I think that's probably too soon. Yeah. Next up, we've got a new saddle from Seller Italia. So they've extended their ID match range with the new Novus Boost Evo. And it's a short-nosed saddle. That's what sort of Boost refers to within their range. We've seen those become pretty pretty popular over the last few years. Also has the Superflow kind of technology, which is Seller Italia's uh, uh, lingo for cutouts in there to help relieve pressure on the soft tissues. tissues. Um, and it also has a kind of like wavy uh, shape to it, which can, well, help some people get a sort of more secure and sort of stable position uh, on the bike as well. But yeah, looks, looks like a nice looking saddle. It does. The shoe brand On has just released a fully recyclable shoe that you can subscribe to. It isn't On a running shoe brand. Yeah, it is, but I thought that this would be quite good that maybe some cycling shoes in the future could do. So the shoe is fully right. recyclable, so you get it. Um, and then when you've worn out your shoe or, you know, you want another one, you send those shoes back and you get the latest pair. It is a subscription fee of £25 a month, but it's pretty cool, a fully recyclable shoe. Yeah, it is quite a good, good idea. Yeah. Like in theory, I think if someone could maybe do a cycling thing with that. Yeah. Because I mean, it's all, you know, all about saving the planet and stuff. And, and the shoe is all made from the same material, from the sole to the fabric on the top. Which yeah. It's quite tricky. I think anything that encourages recycling and sustainability and, and all that sort of stuff is stuff that we should all be focusing on, really. Yeah, definitely. Finally, on hot tech this week, Manon, we've got some cool tech. Cool right. tech. Yeah, because indoor training, right, it's going to get big in it. I mean, winter's winter's coming. It's already here it in the UK. It's definitely here, yeah. We're all going to be riding indoors a lot more yeah. over the next few months. And No Pins has made some indoor specific clothing. I don't know if you remember Manon, but No Pins also made me a skin suit for, for the hour record. <laughs> so, did yeah, you do an hour record, Ollie? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. How did, how did yeah, it go? Pretty good, yeah. Pretty was the skin good. suit fast? Yeah, it certainly was, yeah. Now you're probably wondering, right, how their new Sub-Zero indoor training suit differs from their normal clothing and uh, awesome skin suits. Mm. Well, they feature freeze pockets where you can place little freeze pouches, reusable ones, into the hot places of your body. So on your neck and on your wrists. And these will help keep your core body temperature cool, meaning your body uses less energy Trying to thermoregulate Yeah, trying to, trying to cool itself down and more energy producing watts. Well, you know what? I think if this had been released sort of, I don't know, five years ago, people would have laughed at this idea and thought, yeah. that's ridiculous, no one needs that. But such has been the rise of indoor training. It's serious stuff now. Yeah, and also stuff, people yeah. take like Zwift racing and indoor racing so seriously as well. Yeah. That um, something like this is, I mean, 
yeah, keep me cooler and yeah. I, I get so hot sometimes when yeah. I'm riding. You, I can see a difference when I forget to put my fan on and I start doing a race and I get 10 minutes in and I'm just so warm. It's horrendous. But if you've got the fan on, it does make a difference. So I can see how these little freeze packets on your body will help. Mm. You see it in big races when they put ice into um, socks mm. and they put them down the jersey. Yeah. So, yeah. Usually in the Vuelta yeah. in August. Probably be quite different mm. doing the Vuelta in November. Yeah, probably. Mm. Mm. More hot tech next week. <laughs> It's now time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit evidence of the uh, upgrades that you've made to your bikes, equipment, or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize. The GCN cap. Hey. That's right. And You're not modelling the cap this week? No, I've, uh, I left it at home. Anyway, last week it was good. I mean, you weren't here, man, on, but we had some cracking Do I entries. Miss out? Um, so we had Ooh. this really nice Peugeot that was done up, right, um, by uh, Hayes Thomas, uh, and that was up against B Wong's incredible Cannondale Cad 8 makeover. I like the, the little brown touches on that, the saddle and the saddlebag. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it was close, um, but Hayes Thomas, his uh, spruced up vintage Peugeot, took it 56% versus 44%. Play. Get in contact on Facebook and make sure your cap gets in the post. Um, so who have we got this week? Right, first up this week we've got Shittal Shittalim Iceman. I beg your pardon? I think that's how you say it, not sure. Anyway, he's submitted this and lucky to score a brand new 2010 Super 6. Ooh. He sanded it down and painted it with lacquer himself, built it up from the ground and he said it's inspired by you Ollie. Oh. And the weight? Coming in at 5.59 kilograms. Ooh, that is very light. Yeah. So that's good that he's found one of those old 2010 frames, brand new, unused. Mm. That's really cool. And um, you see his scale shot there, but I mean, wow, he's put some really fancy bits on it. Nice bit of kit. What do you think of the sanded down, sort of black lacquer, nude carbon look? Do you like that? Yeah, I do I actually, think it looks yeah. Cool, doesn't yeah, it? it's different. It looks like he's done a good job with it as well. And I like the, um, the wheels as well. They're Mavic uh, Cosmic Carbon Ultimates, mm -hmm. tubulars, and carbon nice, spokes, nice carbon flanges on those hubs. Black Rip. chain. Yeah, See, it's nice. real stealthy, yeah. slick Ultimate looking bike, stealth isn't mode. it? Um, more importantly though, what do you make of his Superman statue? I mean, that's cool, but check out the Oakley collection. Yeah. I the, feel like we need a little tour of this wow. cabinet. That is impressive. That is, I mean, if he'd sold all those Oakleys, probably could have just bought a, a brand new bike. I know, but it's you oh, yeah, doing it's it for yourself place. and yeah, get more okay. satisfaction. Well, that is an awesome bike um, and an impressive Oakley collection and a weird, massive Superman figure. But yeah. um, it's not going to be plain sailing um, because... It never is. We're up against... It never is. We're up against Carl MCC 79 and Carl has found this old Isla bike, uh, 14, and um, he's decided to sort, sort out his daughter, who's just 15 days old, and get her a bike. I mean, it's gonna yeah. be a while before <laughs> she can ride it, but uh, he, he's tarted it up and painted it to match his Trekker That Mamba. is very nice. Check that this, is so, so cute. Yeah, little old tired Isla bike. Look at the, I mean, it looks like it's seen better days, but then now, look at that. Brand spanking new. I love that he's put Imonda um, on, oh, the, yeah. on the chain stay. All the little details. He's cleaned it up, yeah. But he's got a little skeleton on his fork. The little Isla bike hasn't. Yeah, maybe, well, it's Maybe not a skeleton, a, yeah. a bit. But that's so cool that, that it's like a mini version of dad's bike. Yeah. I think that's so cool. That is. I mean, he's, I think it's going to be a few years. I bet he's like counting down the days until yeah. you can get on it. <laughs> well, uh, they are mm. pretty different, but both awesome, good, yeah. awesome upgrades. So you know what to do. It's not up to us. Vote, click on the thing, me job. Head over to the GCN app and vote. That's what he was Which, trying to say. What Manon said. It's now time for the bike fall. My favourite part of the GCN at a tech show where you submit pictures of your beautiful bikes and we vote if they're a nice or a super nice. And if they're a super nice, the bike fault bell gets run. 
I'm going to get put into the bike wall forever and ever and ever. Yeah. And if you disagree with our judgments, which let's be honest, you're not going to do because they're... They might do. Yeah, but they shouldn't. Anyway, if you do disagree with them, uh, you can have your own say and vote on all the bikes we feature in the GCN app. Mm. So without further ado, who have we got first this first week, Manon? Up, we've got Walwick with a very nice Orbea Orca and this is his first ride on it. Ooh. Oh. He's got... New bike day. Doesn't yeah, get cycled any into a cornfield. Good colour choice. Mm. Very nice. He's either on the edge of the field there or he's inside a crop circle. Crop circle? Yeah. Where the UFOs land? Yeah. Because, I mean, there's no... It's, like, all pattered down there. So, I'm sorry. Like, anyway. We'll go with the, this, the UFO one. Yeah. A bit more exciting. Um, well, that is a... I mean, that's a very nice bike, isn't it? Yeah. Good use of corn to prop the bike up. I've not yeah, seen that used before. Yeah, very sturdy corn. <laughs> sturdy corn. Um, not quite in Biggie Smalls. Are we but not? I think he's... Can we... we I think he is. Yeah. Just about, mate. More, not quite. Um, cranks are aligned, wheels not quite aligned, but I think he was just so excited because it was his, you know, first ride in his new Orbea. What are yeah. you saying? I think it's a super nice. I think it's a super yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a clean looking bike. I mean, yeah, it just looks nice, doesn't it? Um, he's either not got bottle cages yet, or he took them off special for a photo. Lightweight. <laughs> I think he hasn't got any yet, or he forgot yeah. to put them on in his first ride. Um, super nice. Yeah, then. super yeah. nice. Good start. Next up, Brad Keating 27 Retro Ride. Mm. Check this out. Ooh. That is a Klein Quantum 2. That is a seriously cool bit of retro it kit. Is. I love the colour scheme. Yes. The purpley, pinky, pink on the inside. Yeah, I mean, Kleins are. I don't know, there's something about this. They've got a real following as well. There's a lot of people really love old Kleins. Yeah. They are cool bikes. I am digging the- Are you one the, of those followers? I'm kind of like, I, I do I do appreciate a good Klein. Yeah. 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 Um, Veloflex, old, old uh, tires on there as well. I don't think they're tubs though. But um, yeah, it's just very nice, isn't it? I mean, the only thing is, is I think it's someone who knows that they've got a really cool, vintage, classic bike. And so they, they just think they're above the rules. rules. Yeah, they I know. They think they can that. put their bike in at a jaunty angle. They can put it in the small ring at the front. They don't have to align their tires. They can just, mm. you know. Didn't uh, try. Yeah. Didn't, didn't try. No yeah. effort. And you do. You, yeah, yeah, I know. That's a nice. Nice. It's a shame. Nice. It could have been super nice. Next up, we have David C13. Ooh. With a oh a retro TT bike, a, a gangle. gangle, yeah, custom Ooh. cycles uh, from that 1986. That from the saddle to the bars. Yes, that is uh, seriously. Like, is that a Connor bike? Aero position. <laughs> <laughs> There's some serious drop going on. It's also um, a low pro because it's got the, the smaller wheel at the front. They were banned by Whoa, the UCI. Whoa, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, like, like an something, another fun thing that was banned by the UCI. Another fun thing. Yeah. Fun police. Yeah, the fun police. Also, that, that water bottle, it looks like a bottle of fabric softener. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those bottles retro, you have in your, in your yeah, um, pack lunch. Retro TT water bottle on there. Um, that's proper cool, it? Isn't is it? Nice. Look at that, look at the rear mech. Tan that's side that's walls. a rear mech on the back. I might be wrong. Um, that's a really, really cool bike. Yeah. I mean, that is without question a super nice. Very nice paint job as well. Immaculate white bar tape on a vintage bike as well. And the lugs, look how, look at how nice those lugs are. That is, that is just class, isn't it? I'd love Fair. to have a go, I'd love to do a TT on a bike like that. Would you go faster with the smaller wheel? Well, the idea is you get lower at the front end, so you're more aero. That's, yeah, that's but lower's not always necessarily better. It's about... Yeah. Well, that's this, yeah. It? That's why they sort of went out of favour. But yeah. um, anyway, super nice. Yeah. Robert Safarik One Two Four has taken this picture um, in Huntington Beach, California, eh? next to her surf shop. Um, yes, he said he uh, he got this bike after the original broke. He built it up from scratch and he's done 20,000 miles on it. It's a Massi Evoluzione. Mm. What do you think of that? I mean, 
it's different. Green's not necessarily my colour, but nice. Yeah. It's pretty loud and proud, isn't it's it? It's got a lot going on on that frame. Pretty loud and proud, but he's built it up himself. That always gets extra oh, points. Oh, okay, yeah. That's always extra points. And he has made an effort here. Valves. Yeah. Uh, biggie small and crank. And it's immaculately clean. You can eat your dinner yeah. off that. I like his hunt wheels as well. No They're water cool. bottles. Yes. No I, chimney. You know what? That's a super nice. Nice. That is a super yeah. nice. Well, I'm saying that. Yeah, you, yeah, you no, I, I agree. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. Ring that Go bell for bell. it. Got a good, good going today, aren't we? Yeah, it's yeah. Some, it's a strong week. Yeah. And right. the last, is this, I think it's his last one. Yeah, week. it is. It's in from Dave. Davis. Davis. Yeah. Davis. That's it. Davis. Um, with Frank Fisky. Fixie. Frank Fixie. Yeah. Um, I'll get there in the end. Well, wow. I mean, that's. Yellow. Yellow. It's very yellow. Yellow chain. I haven't seen one of them before. Very yellow. There's, There's a, a lot of yellow though. going on there. The, the four. Um, they're not blue. What do you? I'm guessing his favourite colour is yellow. Yeah. Frank's David's. <laughs> David. Um, I, it's, it's a bit of an enigma. This bike. I, so many questions. I don't know yeah. where to start. Why is it called Frank? Um, <laughs> Frank the Fixie. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it's nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think but he's, it's clearly, nice as well. he's clearly gone to a lot of effort with this fixie. You yes. can't buy wheels like that. Can you buy a yellow chain? Yeah, I think you probably can oh, somewhere. Okay. And paint it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a nice. Yeah. 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 Not, not blown away by it, but it, it is nice. <laughs> it's <a bit> weird. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going uh, nice on that one. But if you uh, disagree, you can vote. Yeah, have app. your own say. Unfortunately, that's it for this week's show. Uh, more Bike Vault next week. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you're into live racing, be sure to check out Race Pass as you can watch live racing without adverts. But there is uh, territory restrictions, so make sure that you check what applies where you are. Um, and this is on a race by race basis as well, but the full terms and conditions can be found on the, on the website. And if you do like what we do here and you want to support the channel, why not head over to the GCN shop and get yourself a t-shirt, a water bottle or some Castelli yeah. kit. We've got a lot over there. Anyway, we've got to go now anyway. Sorry to cut you off there, man on. Uh, but yeah, see you later because we're going to Italy now. Oh yeah, yeah we yeah. are. Mm. Right. Very see exciting. you later. Bye. Bye.